Time for a track breakdown. What's going on everyone? Matt, aka Martiln here. I just recently released a single with my good friends Phoenix Manson and Lucy Grind called The One I Need. And so I thought it'd be a really cool and fun idea to dive into the Ableton session, break down the track, pick apart the elements that make it up, go through the process that we took to make the track. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so here we are inside the Ableton Live session for the one I need. Uh, if you haven't listened to the track yet, now's probably a good time to do so. Pause the video, head down to the link in the description, listen to the track, come back and finish watching. So what I thought would be a great idea is if we just go through the track chronologically from start to finish, starting with the intro, and then just picking apart all the elements that make up each section, because for the most part, there's actually not a lot going on and they kind of carry through across for most of the song. So with that said, let's kick off looking at the intro, which sounds like this. Cool. So as you can hear, there's not a huge amount going on there. In fact, there's only really four or so layers. We start with this reverse crash sound and then these main chords come in, which sound like this. And this main chord patch is actually really just a massive kind of super saw sound, this super supreme patch that I use all the time in my productions as a good starting point for like a super saw sound that's just built up inside of Silent One. And all I've done really is just apply some extra EQ and this auto filter to give it that wub sound. On the auto filter, we've just got this LFO here, which is moving in triplets. Uh, and that gives it that kind of wub sound. Without the auto filter, the chords actually sound like this. So really, really massive kind of super saw sound. And that's actually essentially what the chords sound like in the drop. Layered underneath these chords, we have this intro pad sound, which is really subtle and just serves to give a little bit of extra space, width, depth, ambience to the intro and the verses for that matter. That sounds like this. Really subtle, quite quiet and actually all this is is just a preset from Ableton that I've tweaked called a pastron which is one of my favorite pad presets inside of Ableton that uses wavetable so if you haven't checked out this preset yet highly recommend it it's really fun it's great nothing wrong with using presets and then tweaking it to your liking I've also just added a little bit of extra processing like some EQ and an auto filter there as well and some automation on the auto filter at the start of the verse for both the chords and the pads which we'll get into in a second underneath the chords and the pads we just have this kind of noise sweep up towards the end of the intro and this rain ambience that's really, really subtle in the background of the intro. You can probably barely hear it. It just serves to add a nice little extra layer of kind of noise and texture in the background of the intro. So moving on from the intro into the verse, let's hear what the verse sounds like. Together never feels as alone We can delve into the unknown Glide through the motions Feel like we're floating on low Cool. So from the top, we obviously have some drums now, which is awesome. These whole drums basically for this track are just built inside of a single drum rack. We just kept it pretty simple when Phoenix and I were doing the session, just jammed out in a drum rack and decided that we didn't really want to move it out of the drum rack. So we kept it in there and we've done all the processing in the drum rack. So here's the kick drum. We've got some processing on the kick drum, some EQ, a transient shaper, snares, EQs, reverbs, clap, nothing on the clap and just a bunch of extra sounds in here as well. And the main thing that we did, which was kind of cool, is on the hi-hat sound here, we wanted to add a little bit of extra movement to this hi-hat sound. So when the hi-hat sound comes in, you might notice that it kind of pans from side to side or jumps around the stereo spectrum a little bit. And we did this by just going into the simpler device for this particular hi-hat sample, going to the controls and just going to the RAND to pan, which essentially adds some randomization to the panning of this sound in the stereo 
spectrum, which just gives it a cool little bit of extra interest and uh, a great way to keep the ears guessing and engaged and throughout the whole part of the song. So that's a cool little trick there. If you want to add some extra movement to your hi-hats, add some randomization to your pan. Then we of course have a crash and a reverse crash and the same chords just have some auto filter movement on these chords uh, and turned off the LFO. So you get kind of a little bit more of the actual movement of the filter just to serve as a kind of intro to the verse. Then we have this main bass sound, which is really simple and sounds like this. All it is, is just an operator playing a sawtooth wave, just a single saw wave, and then that's being driven and shaped through the filter inside of operator. We've run this kick tight preset. I think they've, we've probably just moved this around a little bit as well. Side chained the MIDI from the bass because that's what you do with corpus. You can get it to actually play the note the bass is playing or whatever other instrument you kind of have that corpus on. You can side chain the MIDI into this corpus so that it actually plays the same note because corpus, if you've ever used it, you'll hear it's quite pitched. So when you put it on a pitched instrument, really useful to actually have it side chained to the MIDI there, which you can open up or close up using this little unfold or fold side chain section in the corpus device. Then just some EQ and some filtering, once again, followed by some side chaining and an automation on the utility just to kind of uh, fade in the volume a little bit at the start here. You'll also notice there's some overlapping notes in the bass sound and that's just because this operator patch is monophonic and we have some glide applied to it so that we get some kind of down sweeps or down pitches to this main bass. Could have been done with pitch bend but we decided to do it with a glide. It was just a little bit easier for us. Then on to the main event, which is of course the vocals. Now the vocals for this, Lucy did a fantastic job for. So I didn't actually have to do a lot of processing, which was really, really good. Um, no editing really, not a lot of processing. And in fact, you'll notice that all the processing was pretty much just done in a single instance of Nectar. So this is what the vocal sounds like, uh, just isolated. Together never feels as alone. We can delve into the unknown. If I open up the Nectar patch, you'll see that I've just got some auto-tuning, gate, EQ, DSing, another EQ, compressor, and some reverb. Uh, just a really, really tiny amount of reverb. I don't think it really even necessarily needs to be there. And actually, all I really did was just run the vocal assistant in Nectar and then tweak it to my liking, just adding some additional EQ bands and uh, some changing the DSer and compressor settings and stuff like that. And then following on from Nectar, we just have some multiband dynamics, which is just a basic Ableton device, just squashing some of the high end to get rid of that sibilance once again, help with the DSing and control the mid range just a little bit as well, which is really, really useful for this. So without the processing, the vocal sounds like this. Together never feels as alone. We can delve into Then with the processing. Together never feels as alone. We can delve into the unknown. You'll notice that the vocals just sound a little bit more up front. You'll also notice that there's some delay on these vocals. So on the main vocal group, I have this delay return rack, which if you want, you can download by signing up to my mailing list, link in the description for that. And all I've done is just with this, basically it acts as a send and return for uh, delay throws. So if I open up my automation, you'll notice I've automated this send knob in the return rack here just so that we get some delay throws on certain words. So like this word, for instance, to the unknown. you can hear that. And this word, Overgrown. To get and this word, to the unknown. and I've used this same kind of technique throughout the entirety of the song, as you can see. We've also got some reverbs and delays on return tracks here, which the vocals are being sent to just to add some different kind of reverbs and delays going on. Having multiple reverbs and delays is a really good way to add some extra depth to your reverb and vocals particularly. Uh, so often use returns for uh, reverb and delay on vocals specifically, not always on other instruments, but vocals particularly I'll use reverbs on returns for then we have this double that comes in here, which is basically just using the same Nectar preset as far as I can really tell, or just slightly different actually, just some slightly different processing. 
and some doubling just to add the vocals or a little, add a little bit more richness and depth uh, to the vocals for this second half of the verse. And this doubled vocal sounds like this. Together never feels as alone. We can delve into the unknown. As you can hear and see, it also has more reverb and delay applied to it as well. Then on the main vocal group, I just have compression and some reverb return, uh, which is being used in the drop section. As you'll notice, there's not really a lot of effects going on uh, throughout this kind of verse either. There's just this sweep up towards the end of it. And then also this reverse synth sound here, which kind of leads into the drop, which sounds like this. And you'll notice there's a little tiny gap just before the drop starts, uh, just to give it a little bit of kind of like a, a jolting feeling when the drop kicks in. So let's take a listen to the drop and break it apart. So you'll notice that we use basically the exact same chords here. Pretty much the drum pattern stays exactly the same, except we've just added an additional snare sound on that main snare to give it a little bit more punch and transientness. Uh, this crash occurs and with the chords here, we've opened up the filter completely so that we don't get that kind of wubbing sound going on with the filter. It sounds like this. There's a layer underneath these chords, kind of like a mid layer and a top line here, which is what's actually having that kind of triplet wubby like effect, which is actually just a super saw that's been built inside of analog. And then using that same kind of auto filter setting there to give it a little bit more kind of a movement and that wubby sound. And as you'll notice, we're automating the rate so that we get a little bit more kind of rhythmic interest in this sound as well. Then we've kept that main bass sound going and layered it with a drop bass, which is just a bit more of kind of like a buzzy Reese bassy type sound. Sounds like this. Cut out all the low end in it so that it gels well with the main bass sound. And then also added these 808 kind of bass fills, which sound pretty cool uh, like this. Just an 808 sample. Uh, I think big shout, shout outs to Phoenix for actually programming these ones. They were pretty awesome. Uh, 808 bass sample with some saturation and that's pretty much it. Then the vocals, we just added in some backing vocals here, which are really just vocal doubles, but they just pan and spread to the left and the right to give some extra width just with different takes. So these sound like this. You're the one. So it just gives it a little bit more width and extra kind of depth to the main vocals which come in and these backing vocals also have this sound, which is really nice. And as you'll notice, I did actually no processing on these except for some really basic EQ and some compression. And of course, uh, sending to some reverb and delay as well. Then the next kind of major thing that we added in the drop are these vocal chops, which sound like this. Pretty straightforward vocal chops. We just grabbed in some kind of vocal chop sample, brought it into simpler, chucked it onto slice mode, uh, changed the transposition so we were in the right key. And then we also actually have this Auburn Sounds Graylon here to pitch it down at certain points. As you would have heard, these last notes here, for instance, are pitched down an octave as opposed to these ones, which are the higher octave, which is pretty cool. Some EQ, some OTT, some, uh, this little kind of enhanced preset that I just created myself, which is just some overdrive, some parallel overdrive, some more EQ, and then this audio effect rack, which is doing some pretty cool stuff with some delay, which is actually being side chained to the main vocal chops. So if I solo the main vocal chops, you'll hear that the delay kind of comes in in the gaps in between the vocal chops, as opposed to hearing the delay over the top of the vocal chops. 
And because this delay is pretty heavily filtered, so we're just hearing the high end of it, kind of almost sounds like the delay gets sucked away at the end of these pieces, which is pretty cool. Then just some compression, sidechain, and some filtering at the end as well, which is just used for the final outro. Final thing in the effects is just this little exhaust here, which is just some noise. Just to add a little bit of extra sizzliness and high end to the drop. From this point on, there's not a huge amount to talk about. We kind of use pretty much the exact same elements throughout. Um, this breakdown is pretty interesting. I'll play it for you and you'll notice that there's one additional element, which is this kind of flange harp element here. So this is what the breakdown sounds like. So that's the kind of only addition. I actually just grabbed a straight up flange harp preset from Ableton and again, just did some extra EQing and stuff to make it a little bit different and make it sit kind of a little bit further back in the mix. And then really the exact same thing is happening in this breakdown with just these chords and the pad playing, as well as this little sub drop here, which sounds like this. Just to aid the transition and bring back in that rain ambience and some noise. Verse two is pretty much exactly the same as verse one. Don't really need to go into that. And then this little piano breakdown is pretty similar, except there are two elements that I want to draw your attention to. The first one, of course, being the actual piano, which sounds like this. Now this piano is actually made up of three different piano sounds. So this is actually the group for this piano here. And you'll notice that I have this first piano sound, which is actually just Ableton Live's grand piano with max humanizer added to it to just make it a little bit more human, even though I did play it in on my keyboard. And this is panned all the way to the left. And it sounds like this. Then I have the exact same recording of that MIDI, except the actual audio recording that I played on my Nord keyboard panned all the way to the right and EQ'd slightly differently, which sounds like this. So those two sounds together just give this piano a little bit of extra width. Kind of sounds like a double tracked piano. And then I've just taken that same recording of the Nord piano audio and pitched it down an octave and EQ'd it slightly differently to add some more weight. And that sounds like this. So all of those together, I then just run through some reverb, some EQ and some compression. And then I just bounced that out to all. And I had this little reverse part at the start as well, which I literally just reversed the first chord of these Nord piano audio sounds, uh, just to aid in the transition into this piano section. Then the next instrument or sound that was added in this piano breakdown is this Atmos percussion, which sounds like this. All I did was grab a bongo percussion kind of loop and ran it through some processing here. There's actually an old video on my channel called how to make atmospheric percussion or something along those lines. Um, I'll make sure to link that video in the description so you can go and watch that. But I used basically the same technique as I did in that, just applying a bandpass auto filter with a fairly high resonance and an LFO moving quite slowly, as well as some auto pan delay and reverb. And then all together, we get this piano break that sounds like this. And then that goes back into this final drop, which is pretty much exactly the same as the first drop, except for one extra little addition at the second half, which is this ARP sound right here. Cool. 
Cool. So pretty simple uh, and dry up sound there. Really not much going on. Uh, I actually muted that delay that you would have heard in here. So uh, don't really worry too much about that. Except you notice I did automate the arpeggiator gate to just make it so the different pluck sounds kind of got a little bit longer towards the ends of uh, these particular chords right here. So. So it just opens up a little bit more. Aside from that, pretty much everything here is exactly the same as in the first drop. And then we move on to the outro, which is slightly different. And it's just a little bit, uh, some kind of an extra add on to the end of the track, which Phoenix actually did. And I was super stoked with it and we wanted to include it in the track, but we couldn't find a place for it except it fit really well at the end. So that's where we kept it. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Cool. So you can thank Phoenix for coming up with that awesome bass part. And then all I did afterwards was his idea was to just add a little bit of extra distortion, a little bit of grit to this 808 sound. So we had that saturator that was already there. And I actually automated that saturator to kind of get a little bit more intense towards the ends of these notes here, which is pretty cool. Adds a little bit of like a, another reverse kind of sound going on. And then actually did a bit of a frequency split here so that I could just drive the middle band of this 808 sound, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra grit. You'll also notice that those vocal chops are going over this outro as well, just slightly filtered. And really, aside from the drums, that's pretty much it. So there you have it. That is a track breakdown for The One I Need, which is out now. You can go listen to it on your favorite streaming service. Huge shout out to Phoenix Manson and Lucy Grind for being such an awesome team to work with on this tune. And if you're supporting me on Patreon, depending on your tier, you'll get access to either the stems and or the project file for this track. So you can go in, learn a little bit more and just figure out how things were made. Outside of that, if you dug this video, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe and hit that little bell notification icon so you don't miss any uploads. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, sign up to my mailing list if you're interested in some free stuff. And of course, if you really enjoy my content, feel free to head over to Patreon and support me there. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next one.